Hopefully you mastered the lesson on the sine function and that will make your life so much easier for the cosine function because cosine function and sine function are pretty much the same thing. Alright, so the cosine function, y equals cosine of theta, matches theta with the x-coordinates of the point on the unit circle. So here with cosine theta, all we've done is we've taken the unit circle and we start at that point, um, so 0, 1 here, 0, 1 here, and we've kind of just extended that unit circle, so down here, and instead of going backwards, we kind of like took this whole piece and flipped it down and around and back up again. So you still have um, this point here, well, here, it's not even, oh, here, there it is, that point there. You still have these points here, here. So these are still all your points on your unit circle. So interpreting a graph. What are the domain, period, range, and amplitude of the cosine function? So remember, domain represents all x values. So if we look at x values, um, those are these values from left to right, x values. Do we have any restrictions? Well, since we have arrows pointing both directions for forever, the domain is all real numbers. All real numbers. Okay, for the period. Apparently I need to learn how to spell. From beginning of the cycle, going all the way through, back to the end of the cycle again, <coughs> is 2 pi units. For our range, we're going to look at our y values. So let's see. Um, our maximum value here is, this is negative 1 down here, so this must be positive 1. And then from positive 1 to negative 1. So we actually add these two, so our range is 2. So we go up 1 and we go down 1. And then to find our amplitude, um, our amplitude is one half of our greatest value minus our least value. So one half of two and one half of two is one. So our amplitude is one. So from the midline, y equals zero is our midline. We have an amplitude up one and down one. Um, I need to change my statement on range. Range, we're looking at y values, not like central tendency values. My apologies. So we have from negative one to 1 as our values for y. And that's better. So properties of a cosine function, um, this should look very similar to a sine function, y equals a cosine b theta, um, and a is still the amplitude of the function, b is still the number of cycles of the interval from 0 to 2 pi, and uh, to find the period of the function, 2 pi over b. Those are all the same things that we talked about with sine function, except now we're talking about cosine. So sketching uh, the graph of a cosine function, we're going to sketch one cycle of 1.5 cosine 2 theta. So let's first look at y equals a cosine b theta. Okay, so our a value represents our amplitude. And in this case, our amplitude is 1.5. That means we're going to go up 1.5 as our maximum and down 1.5 as our minimum from our midline. And our midline is going to be the x-axis. Okay, now we need to look at our period. Our period is our value of b. And we know 2 pi over b equals 2. Well, the only way to make this be true... Oops, I hit the wrong button. I am sorry. There we go, is to make our b value be pi. <clears throat> if b is pi, that means we have pi divided by pi and they cancel each other, we get 2 equals 2. So that means from 0 as our starting point, um, our ending point is pi. We have a point halfway through, and halfway through is pi over 2. Um, but remember, we're talking about. Uh, oof cosines instead of sines. Um, we also need another point halfway between there. That's pi over 4. 
and this one is 3 pi over 4. Okay, now, um, and we need our y values. So there's 2, there's negative 2. Okay, so remember, with cosine, cosine you don't start at 0, 0. <clears throat> A way that um, I was always taught is you don't slide down sine because sine functions, uh, when they're positive, they start by going up. So you don't slide down sine. Cosine functions, you start at your maximum point or at your minimum point, depending on if it's positive or negative. So our amplitude is 1.5. So we cross here. Um, and then we go to our 0. I need to do this in a different color, otherwise it's going to get all muddled. Okay. So 1.5. We cross at our 0. Then we have our minimum of 1.5. We cross at our zero again, and we go back up to our maximum. So cosine function looks kind of like that. So it's a sine function um, that's just been moved. Because if we continue it, it still makes that same curve that a sine function makes. So a sine function still makes the same curve as a cosine function, except they're inverted. So they're like um, reciprocals of one another. All right, there you go. There it is again. So modeling a cosine function. In oceanography, the water level varies from low tide to high tide as shown. There's a picture here. Lovely. Uh, what is a cosine function that models the water level in inches above and below the average water level? Express the model as a function of time in hours since 10.30 a.m. So if you look at this picture here, we have um, low tide at 10.30 a.m., and we have high tide at 4.40 p.m., and the difference between the two is 60 inches. So if we want to find what our amplitude is, we need half of that 60 to find our midline. So our midline is halfway in between, um, well, to find our amplitude. So our amplitude is one half of 60, and half of 60 is 30. Okay, so we know that this is our value of A. We're going to be plugging this into Y equals A cosine b theta. Okay, now we need to be able to find our value of b next. So we're going to talk about how many cycles. So we need to look at time. So in looking at time, we need to compare from low tide to high tide, um, the times. Because um, in order to make a full cycle, we have to go from low tide to high tide and back to low tide again. So if we start at 1030 with a low tide, and we have high tide at 1040, um, how long is that? Well, that's 6 hours and 10 minutes. But that's only half of our cycle. Because in order to make a full cycle, we have to go back to low tide again. So if we have two of these, another 6 hours and 10 minutes, that makes 12 hours and 20 minutes. So a full cycle is 12 and 1 third hours. But we need to put that into a form um, that's in radians to be our b value. So remember the formula that we use, 2 pi over b equals, well, we need to convert 12 and 1 third to an improper fraction. So 12 times 3 is 36, and 36 plus 1 is 37. So I have 37 over 3. Can cross multiply. So 37b equals 6 pi divided by 37 by 37. There you go. So b is 6 pi over 37, which is really a terrible number um, when you look at it. <clears throat> it's kind of gross. Okay, but we're going to plug this into our y equals a cosine b theta, and we have an equation. y equals our a values, 30, cosine, um, I don't know what that is, cosine of 6 pi over 37. Look at that fabulous equation. Isn't it just lovely? Oh, and since we're starting with low tide, first it has to be a negative value. Sorry about that. So it has to be um, a negative value since we start low. Because with a regular cosine function, we start high, go low, and come back up. So if we start low and go high, whoa, I don't know what I just did. 
but if we start low and go high and come back down, then this is a negative function, whereas this one is a positive function. Okay. I've got one more problem for you. For solving a cosine function, suppose that you want to find the time when the water level is exactly 10 inches above the average level of um, f of t equals 0, so that 1030 when the tide is low. What are all solutions to the equation of the interval from 0 to 25? So from 0 to 25 hours, so that's within like a 24 hour period, how many times is the water level 10 inches above um, where it is at 10.30 a.m.? So, or no, 10 inches above the average level, so our midline. So what we need to do is we need to take our two functions. So the one that we made, so enter y1 into y1. I should have changed this to an x. So change that to an x. In your y1, put negative 30 cosine 6 pi over 37 times x into your y1. And then in your y2, we want to look at when x is uh, 10. No, when y is 10. Yeah, we want to look at when y is 10. So go ahead and put y equals 10 into your y2 button. Now we're looking at x values from 0 to 25. So you may need to go into your window and change your window from uh, your x min being 0 to your x max being 25. So you can see all the times that these two cross each other. So go ahead and graph them both on your calculator. And then you're going to use the intersect feature to find um, all the points that satisfy. So when you graph it, it's going to look kind of like this. So I have my x window from 0 to 25. And I have my y window from um, negative 35 to positive 35. Just so you can see what I see. So when you graph it, it kind of does this. Hmm. Oops. There we go. So it looks kind of like that for your first one. And then your second one goes like this. So all of these points here where the two cross each other, all four of those points are locations where your um, the water level is 10 inches above your average. So if this is the average, this is high tide, this is low tide, this is where you're 10 inches above. And every time when the tide goes in, the tide goes out, um, it crosses and it's 10 inches above, either when it's going in or when it's going out. So go ahead and do the intersect feature and you can find all four of those locations. This is at 3.75, 8.58, 16.08, .08, and 20.92. And what this means is this is how many hours it is after 10.30 a.m. So 3 hours and 45 minutes after 10.30 a.m. is the first time it's 10 inches above our um, medium value. All right, so here's your lesson check. I want you to do these two things. Sketch a graph of y equals cosine 1 half theta and then write a cosine function assuming that a is a positive number with an amplitude of 3 and a period of 2 pi. And you're going to do these with your partner when you get to class. And then uh, your homework is 3-5 and I hope you have a great night. See you later.